This is the only red article of clothing that I own. It looked like an 80s exercise video. But it's very, very comfy. Hey there! I don't make cake. Like, ever. If I do make cake, it's like a bunt cake or a loaf cake, and I don't usually decorate it in any way whatsoever, whatsoever, because I devour half of it when it's straight out of the oven and still so hot that it can burn my mouth. Who doesn't? But I've really been in the mood to make something sort of extreme and highly decorated and a little over the top for Christmas because uh, I don't really do anything for Christmas. This is it. This is my one Christmas effort. And I considered making like a really elaborate gingerbread house. And then I realized that I haven't made a gingerbread house in probably about 20 years. So instead I thought, why don't I make a beautiful winter cake with like a small gingerbread house on top, decorating it. Start small. So first thing I'm gonna do is sketch this out Great British Bake Off style. I'll be my own illustrator. I'm no good at it, but I'll do it anyway. All right, so first up, it's just gonna be a two-tiered cake. Because I can't make this thing huge because um, someone has to eat it. And then there's going to be filling. <laughs> The filling is actually gonna be two things. So first up, I'm going to make an eggnog creme pat. So basically I'm just making a regular vanilla creme pat and adding nutmeg, and that's enough to make it eggnog flavored. In the center of that, I'm going to be putting a cranberry jelly, not the nasty canned version of cranberry jelly that you could buy on a shelf, a nice, homemade cranberry jelly with some traces of orange zest and orange ju juice, 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 juice in there. Then I am going to frost the whole thing, because yes, that's what frosting looks like, with an Italian meringue, because I don't like buttercream. I don't at all. Also, buttercream tends to be yellow, even if you're leaving it white and not coloring it, whereas Italian meringue can be snow white, and I want this to look like snowy hills, so perfect choice. Also, I just don't like buttercream. And then I will be adding little gingerbread house on top. Can you tell I learned third grade drawing so I can at least make a 3D house? Ta -da. I'm also gonna probably make like little gingerbread house flat cookies to go around the outside. So there's like a little village. Finally, to top it off with a little bit of extra, I'm going to do some rosemary sprigs and some cranberries in sugar. So that is my general plan. As you can see, I rock at drawing. So I'm giving myself two days to do this because a lot of stuff is just gonna take a hot second, some of it needs to refrigerate, and I've kind of made out a plan so that, you know, it gets done properly. Fun is more fun when you have a schedule and a list. We're starting with the cookies. We used to make gingerbread cookies every year. We didn't make gingerbread houses, but we made gingerbread men, women, lots of other things. If I can find some pictures, I'll put them up. Every single year it got bigger than the last. And I'm not talking like we were little eight year olds making these. I don't think we started this tradition until I was like 10 or 12 or something. And yeah, we took it very seriously. It was an intense art project, but I love that every year you could see our like commitment to the process wane. Our first ones that we'd turn out would be like some insane lineup of characters. But then you could tell that like by the end, by the time we were getting to the last dozen cookies. We were all just like over it. So literally like the last thing I made every single year was usually a blob with every single color of frosting and every single decoration just like slapped on top of it. Best fun. So yeah, that was a really fun thing we did every year. Um, and I don't know what gingerbread cookie recipe we used for that. I've slept since then. It's been like a decade. So I am using Sally's Baking Addiction because I use her recipes a lot and I trust them. And I actually remembered to leave butter out to soften last night. Am I good or what? Why do you hate me? 
You know what I'm the absolute worst at? Worse than forgetting to leave out butter is forgetting to leave out an egg or eggs, however many eggs I need. So I'll just sit here and incubate my egg for a middle. A middle? A minute. Also, if you don't have a kitchen scale, it is worth investing in one just so that you never have to pack brown sugar again. Packing brown sugar is annoying. This is riveting content, isn't it? Whoops. Anyone else pretty much never follow the recipe when it says, beat for a full two minutes. Nah. My favorite baking habit is getting bowls that are way too small or just barely big enough so that I have no room to properly stir things. It's a problem, I do it a lot. Dirty? No way. Also not dirty. All right, so this is supposed to chill for like at least three hours before you use it. I present sheet of cookie dough. Plop, plop, plop. Step one is done. Before I could actually make the cookies, I had to plan out what the heck I was doing. So my next step was to trace out the shape of the cake tin that I'm gonna be using and then just decide on like what size this gingerbread house was gonna be because I didn't want it to completely dominate the top of the cake and look ridiculous and it still might, I guess we'll see. Then I tried to figure out how many cookies I would need to go around the outside of the cake and apparently forgot the word circumference. Okay, Google. What is the diameter of a seven and a half inch circle? Matt attempted to help me out here and also apparently forgot the word circumference. What is the equation for calculating the diameter of a circle? We're doing great guys. We're both rocking at math. We did eventually figure out the equation that we needed to our pi in case you were wondering. I really only needed two little stencils in the end, a three by three square and a two by three square, but I went ahead and cut out some paper stencils for things like the door and shutters and the shingles that are gonna go on the roof. And then it was cookie making time. Rolling out the cookie dough before refrigerating it was a lovely idea. I didn't have to use any flour. I didn't have to get my counters dirty. It was so easy to cut everything out. And whenever the cookie dough was getting too soft, all I had to do was pick up this sheet of cling film it was on and throw it back in the freezer. And let me tell you, this stuff gets soft so fast. I was going back and forth to the freezer a bazillion times throughout this entire process. It was basically grab it from the freezer, cut out as many things as possible, stick it back in because it's already melting into goop. Despite my best efforts, the cookies did spread a little bit in the oven, so I went ahead and trimmed down some of them, just the squares that are going to be constructing the house, so that I'll have nice straight sides and they'll fit together really well. I also cut out the windows that I completely forgot to cut ahead of time, which is probably better because now they're actual nice clean shapes. And then it was just, you know, rinse and repeat. A ton more cookies, a ton more baking, over and over and over again. I didn't feel a need to trim down the sides of the flat cookies that are going to be the little village houses around the outside of the cake. I'm okay with those being a little rounded on the edges because they don't have to fit together. There's no construction involved. Making all of the little details that I'm going to put on the house was um, a little complicated. I rolled out the dough very thin so that these would be as flat as possible and then I just baked them for way less. But because it was so thin, it also melted twice as fast. My stencil for the shingles quickly failed. It, it was way too small and it got sticky immediately. So I decided on a better plan, which was just cutting out these little rectangles and then pinching the ends together to make it rounded. That worked out pretty well. They're all different sizes, but I kind of like that because it's gonna look more, you know, rustic and cute and cottagey. I calculated that I would need something like 30 shingles for each side of the roof, which already sounds like a massive amount, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I ended up making more than that. Didn't bother counting the final product. Cookies are done, huzzah! 
I did have a little bit more time today though, so I decided to do a couple more elements that could sit in the fridge overnight and refrigerate to solidify. Starting with the cranberry jelly, I picked out the prettiest ones so that I could use them for sugared cranberries tomorrow. And then I just added the zest of an orange, about four spoonfuls of raw sugar, and the juice of half of that orange, stirred it all together, threw it on the stove. That cooks down like any jam and uh, it's super easy. If you've never made jam at home, like it's incredibly easy and it tastes so good. So definitely give that a try. For the eggnog cream pat, I started by separating my eggs. I'm using three egg yolks with one cup of milk. Those egg yolks get stirred with some sugar and cornstarch. And then I put some vanilla paste, which I just bought for the first time the other day, in with my milk. I like this because it actually has the little seeds in it. So it just looks a little more authentic, but my God, I cannot be bothered to buy a real vanilla bean. Have you seen how expensive those are? By then the cranberries were already in this lovely jelly form. I kind of mashed them to make sure there were no whole cranberries inside there, but I wanted it to be chunky still, almost more like a compote. And I'm pretty sure cranberries are really full of pectin, which is why they solidify into a jelly so well. Don't quote me on that. But that is why I put them into the round cake tin before sticking them in the fridge. That way they would kind of solidify into a disc that would be really easy to put in between the two cake layers. Making crimp patisserie is really hard to film because sometimes it takes for freaking ever and then other times it's just really fast. And today it was really fast. Basically you're heating up the milk. I think it's called scalding the milk where it's almost boiling, but not actually boiling yet. And then you use that to temper your egg yolks, which basically means you're pouring in a small amount of the hot milk while vigorously stirring the egg yolks. And this brings the temperature of them up without scrambling them. Because if you dumped the egg yolks right into the hot milk, you would have scrambled eggs. So once your egg yolks are warm enough, you can dump them back in the mixture and then you basically stir like crazy until it thickens into the texture that you want. Mine thickened up really fast, so it was done almost immediately. Then I stirred in a couple tablespoons of butter and some nutmeg to make it eggnog flavored, dumped it into a bowl, and went through that lovely gymnastics that is trying to put cling film right onto the top. If you don't put something touching the top of creme patisserie while you cool it, then it forms a skin, which is kind of gross. So you have to do this um, really annoying thing that takes forever every single time. And that was it for day one. The first thing I had to do on day two was make the gingerbread cake because that needs to be fully cooled before I can put the whole thing together. And of course, today I forgot to leave out the butter. I told you I was bad at this. Then I had to wash a few dishes because I realized that all of my baking utensils were in the dishwasher, still dirty. While making this recipe, I got really suspicious that gingerbread cake is actually just the exact same recipe as gingerbread cookies, but with boiling water poured in at the end, because this looks exactly like what I did yesterday. Maybe the ratio of like solids to liquids is slightly different, but I'm pretty sure I could make cookies out of this if I didn't pour the boiling water in. And I think if I had just poured boiling water into yesterday's cookie recipe, I would have had a cake. A theory to test on a different day. Apparently this is the only green article of clothing that I own. I am just not very Christmassy, am I? Cakes are cooling and next up is icing the cookies, which is yet another thing I haven't done in a very long time because I'd rather just eat cookies than decorate them. So this should be really interesting. This is my leftover gingerbread and now I really just want to break it in half. Don't judge me. Yeah, it's pretty darn good. Anyway. Yeah, I think I got enough here. Ah. So one thing I apparently did not consider needing more of was powdered sugar. So this is, you know, what I've got. I mean, I say one thing, but I also ran out of milk, so I'm gonna be using cream to do this instead. Also, if I make this too watery, I have nothing to add to it. Have I ever gotten my royal icing right on the first try? No. Ultimately, I never get it right the first time because I get bored. So then I just add a lot of liquid 
and it's always too much. Story of my life. We've created a cookie dough stage. What is that? <sighs> no. Oh, good lad. All right, so this is what I've got to use. This is all I've got to use. So these outside little village houses, they might be lucky if they get a door and a window. Oh, this is gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna be shaking so hard all the way through this because I am weak. I'm not great at this part. Decor is not my forte. To be honest, I'm already super bored. So how about we cut to me being done? Well, that sucked. I am recalling why I don't do this. It's because I don't like it. There is a mess everywhere. Ah. I have my little house. I like the little shingles on top. The rest of it is kind of like a third grader did it, sticking with the theme. And then I got really simple on the other ones because I could no longer be bothered. And now it's meringue time because it's already really late and I still have so much to do on this cake. This is a lot, y'all. Just looking at this makes me need to drink water. Construction time. <laughs> Everything is so sticky. So the first step is actually the eggnog cream pat, which I really think that I should pipe into the middle of this. That being said, I don't wanna. <sighs> also, I'm pretty sure all of my spatulas are dirty again. See, I'm already making a mess. Here we go. That does taste just like eggnog. I'm so afraid this is all just gonna splodge out of the sides when I put the other one on. Jam time. So this also solidified pretty well, but I don't think it actually would stay in this disc. So I'm still just gonna spoon it into the center, but it was worth a try. Hi, sweet boy. This is a gorgeous Christmas cake. All right, here comes the scary part. Cause I feel like it's gonna splodge. It's not splodging. I am gonna have to be so careful when I'm icing this. The white outer layer could mix with this very yellow inner layer and then we're gonna end up with yellow snow. <laughs> now for yet another thing I haven't done in ages, frosting a cake. Oh, I anticipate a mess. All right, y'all, it's covered. So I thought that putting this cake together, like this part right here would be the hard part. And what I'm uh, learning right now is that no, icing the cookies and making the gingerbread house, that was the hard part. I'm gonna throw the side ones on first, just in case the top one makes it collapse. Okay. I 
I mean, this is a pretty weighty gingerbread house. Oh my God, it's huge. <laughs> Remember when I said, let's hope it doesn't dominate the top of the cake and look ridiculous? <sighs> it appears to be okay <laughs> for now. I have a cute little fence. Should I put a little fence on it? You know what? It basically looks exactly like I thought it would. I think I pictured the gingerbread house being just a smidge smaller, a little more delicate, maybe a bit more finely decorated. Nah, I'm pretty pleased with it. The last thing I would leave you with is does it actually taste good? Except I don't want to cut into it. However, I do have leftover remnants of every single thing on here. Ta-da! All of the elements in a nice convenient little bowl. Let's give it a try. Yeah, I'd say all of these flavors go together really well. The nutmeg in the crimp hat is a little strong. I could have done a bit less, but I think it's okay because there is no mut nutmeg, 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 nutmeg in the gingerbread itself. The whole thing is not overly sweet, especially because the cranberry cuts through with all of that lovely tartness that it has. This works. Alrighty, that's it. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for watching. This is a random exploration, I know, but I think there's gonna be a lot more random videos, project vlogs, etc., on the channel in this coming year. And I also just wanna say how much I appreciate every single one of you who watches or subscribes or comments or all of the above. I do read every single one of your comments and they mean a lot to me. I love to answer questions when I can and I really love to connect with you guys that way. Also, this has been the first year, it's been a year now of me making and posting videos consistently on YouTube. And I must say, I have really, really enjoyed it. I've gotten to do a lot of projects that I don't think I would have done otherwise, just because it's hard to just justify spending the time on something and I have loved every single second of it. So a big thank you to every single one of you. I appreciate you guys so much. Have a marvelous holiday season and I'll see you in 2022. Yeah, sure. Bye! Already we just started. So it begins. I haven't even gotten out food yet. Apparently, this is much gingerbread as my birthday cake. Hi. You wanna make cookies with me? No.